patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Jah and the faith of Joshua the Messiah, who died for our sins. Grace and peace, Brother Sean here from the Zion Assembly of Jah. Don't forget to check out our other videos on our channel, as well as you can check out our website at zionofjah.info. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do that and share and like this video. Now I know there's going to be a lot of people saying, hey Brother Sean, why are you showing that scripturally inaccurate clip about that racist movie, The Ten Commandments? Well, there's a lot in there. And even though you know me already, we teach clearly and understand fully that the Israelites were black. I mean, that's throughout the scriptures. But again, that's not the focus of what I want to really get to. Because when you really look into things, there's a lot of other depths that we can see through the scriptures that the Father can reveal to us as well. And I want to focus on a few of those things. From the Zion Assembly of Jah, I present to you the throne of Jah and the sapphire stones. This lesson hopefully will strengthen you to understand great things about the sapphire stones and open up your understanding on the rest of the scriptures. Shalom. O Jah, Thou that dwellest in everlastingness, which beholdest from above the things in the heaven and in the air, whose throne is inestimable, whose glory may not be comprehended, before whom the host of angels stand with trembling, whose service is conversant in wind and fire, whose word is true and sayings constant, whose commandment is strong and ordinance fearful whose look drieth up the depths, and indignation maketh the mountains to melt away, which the truth witnesseth. O hear the prayer of thy servant, and give ear to the petition of thy creature. My prayer is that as we discuss this topic of Jah's Sapphire Throne of Justice, that this cannot really describe Jah's heavenly throne at all. I've had no visions, but we can use scriptures and the Holy Spirit may help us use our right mind to come to an understanding of Jah's great glory. So let's get into this. 
Let's look at the sapphire, aka also known as lapis lazuli, the blue stone. Now, first off, I wanted to say this simply is that there may be like a difference between the sapphire stone and lapis lazuli, and they are both mentioned as being a translation of this word sapphire, and they are very similar. So I don't want to get too technical in these terms and understandings, but you'll get the gist of things when we talk about the blue stone. Now, basically, a sapphire is a precious gemstone. And you can see on your screen it's made of these various things. But at the bottom it says, the name sapphire is derived from the Latin sapphirus and the Greek sapphiros, both of which simply mean blue. And this word is in the scriptures. And when we look it up in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, in the Strong's Concordance, under H5601, it's sapir. And as you can see on your screen, it's sapphire or sapphire stone. But as well, we can see clearly that it's also there as lapis lazuli. And just the same way when we look in the New Testament in the Greek, under G4552, we have sapphiros. And this as well translates simply as a sapphire, a precious stone. So these are the blue stones that kind of that are being spoken about and there's many variations and you can see these stones in the raw here and an understanding but the blue is very outstanding. There's various ways to look at the differences of sapphires and they come in various tones not only blue but the most are in like their the bluish form. And one thing is important to know is that these raw stones and it's just like a, a spiritual symbolism of, of us, how the Father is working with us. And it means here to make smooth and glossy, especially by rubbing or friction. Also to render finished, refined or elegant. Now I want to go down to the bottom one to become refined or elegant. Now, when we're looking at this kind of definition, we look at ourselves spiritually, we ourselves are like jewels in the Father's hands. He's a jewel collector, but we have to be polished and refined. And after things get polished and refined, you know, things come out beautiful. And here's just the definition of this understanding of the purity of our character and holiness before the Most High that He has to polish us. Lamentations 4 verse 7, it reads, her Nazarites were purer than snow, and they were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. And like I said, this is what it's all about, us being polished and turning to just beautiful stones. And when we look at these stones again, they come in various colors. You can see the lapis lazuli might be a little bit different in a sense when it comes to a stone when we do come across this word sapphire. So let's look at Jah's sapphire throne. Sirach 1 reads, There's one wise and greatly to be feared, Jah sitting upon his throne. As we know, the Most High Father is a consuming fire. And so never take this as a joke or just as a metaphor or symbolism. It's very serious. And he's the one who's supposed to be feared. Matthew 5, it reads, But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is Jah's throne. Isaiah 66, 1 Thus saith Jah, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Now we know these things greatly that the Most High's throne is in heaven. And throne also doesn't just literally just mean just a single throne, but it's a symbolism of his kingdom, his power, his great authority. And that's why when we talk about heaven in this instance here, we're also going to be speaking about the sky heaven as well, because there are three heavens. Many people teach otherwise. But there are three heavens and the most high heaven, the third heaven, is where the most high's kingdom throne is that he has in heaven but it will come down to earth. Ezekiel 1 And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. 
and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness and as the appearance of a man above it. And I saw the color of amber as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so is the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the lightness of the glory of Jah, and when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. So we can see here clearly in verse 26, we see, see that we have the throne, a likeness of a throne, and it's the appearance of a sapphire stone. This is beautiful to understand. You see, we know that the rainbow was there. And in Ezekiel 10, we also see that it reads, Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the seraphims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. So we can see here clearly, and this is just a depiction, but this throne is a sapphire throne. Let's get some more information about Jah's wonderful throne. Revelation 4 verse 2 And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Jah. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Now indeed, this is a wonderful, wonderful, you know, vision, and no one can put any justice to it. But we know that the sea was like glass, like crystal is clear, almost it would seem like ice. And we have the rainbow and just sapphire stone, along with the other spiritual cherubim, angels, and el elders that surround the throne. Of course, we cannot speak of right now. Psalms 47 reads, Jah reigneth over the heathen, Jah sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Psalms 89, 14. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. So what I want to show with these verses is that although we're talking about Jah's throne being the sapphire throne, it's also a throne built upon his character and his righteousness, its holiness, its judgment, right? Its mercy, its truth. Psalms 97. Jah reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of islands be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Hebrews 4 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we see again, Jah's throne, it's a throne of grace, judgment, mercy, and truth based upon his commandments. Now what I want to talk about here is the blue cloth. And you know, this topic about blue is just, I've really gotten into blue the last couple of years. And although I love all the colors and they come from the rainbow, this blue stands out to me greatly in royalty and justice, law and commands. So I want to share a few things. And as we share a few things, we're going to have to go look back into the scripture and look back at the tabernacle. And in the, within the tabernacle was the holy place, and within the holy place was the holy of holies. 
and you would have the candlestick you would have the shoe bread you'd have the altar of incense and this is all gold and of course you would have the ark of the covenant or the ark of the testimony and these were all within the holy place and the holy of holies was only once a, uh, once a year that the priest can go inside but be sure that know that these were the items and the, the sort of the articles of the temple that were overlaid in gold so let's get a read about some interesting things regarding the blue numbers 4 verse 4 this shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation about the most holy things and when the camp setteth forward Aaron shall come and his sons and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of testimony with it that's the ark of the covenant and shall put thereon the covering of badger skins and shall spread over it a cloth holy of bloom and shall put in the staves thereof and upon the table of shoe bread they shall spread a cloth of blue and put thereon the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers to cover withal and the continual bread shall be thereon so as we can see here right off the bat that this blue covering this blue cloth is very special and it's just choosing to cover these holy golden you know artifacts of Jah. they are the most holy things and they shall take a cloth of blue and cover the candlestick of the light and his lamps and his tongs and his snuffle dishes his snuff dishes and all the oil vessels thereof whereof they minister unto it and upon the golden altar they shall spread a cloth of blue and cover it with a covering of badger skins and shall put the staves thereof and they shall take all the instruments of min of ministry wherewith they minister in the sanctuary and put them in a cloth of blue and cover them with a covering of badger skins and shall put them on a bar in esther we hear we read of that mordecai he goes out from the presence of the most high wearing blue and white as well amongst the other royal colors verse 15 and mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple and the city of shushan rejoiced and was glad so as we look at this we can see that this cloth of blue, the color of blue, is very special to Jah. And again, we can probably do a lesson on all the colors of the rainbow. But let's move on. Be sure to know that these great holy artifacts that were very precious to the Most High, covered in blue. And not only that, it's good to remember that this Ark of the Covenant housed the ta two tables of stone and of which you will see that these two tables of stone were more likely carved out of the blue stone. Before we go there, let's look at another aspect of Jah's law, his justice, his mercy, his commandments, and the ribbon of blue numbers 15 37 and Jah spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue so again we can see here that this is a part of Jah's commandments so to speak to the children of Israel what they were to do when they were in the land and it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Jah and do them and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which you use to go a whoring that you, rem you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your Elohim I am Jah your Elohim which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim I am Jah your Elohim your God and Deuteronomy 22 that speaks on this 
Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture wherewith thou coverest thyself. Now I want to let you know that with this topic here regarding fringes, it can get very tense amongst people. Now we can see here that this, this commandment here was given so that the people could remember all the commandments. So when they would have them on their garments, it would be something that would prick their conscience. Now I've done a lesson about fringes and if believers today have to wear them. And we teach that they don't have to wear them because we're not in that land right now doing those things. And as well, the Holy Spirit that has slowly been given to us is something that we wear from the inside. But I want to let you know that this topic I find is a very important topic. And for those who want to wear fringes, there's nothing wrong with that. Just do remember that the fringes were to remind us to keep the commandments. So let's be wise and know that those who are keeping the commandments, and many arguments have been made that, well, then you should keep the fringe command. You know, but if those people are keeping the commandments, we should be looking into those things very wisely. But that's another topic. But I want to say a few things while I'm here. You see, when it comes to the fringes, there's been like a lot of controversy. And I don't mean to add confusion here, but to be honest, I've seen a, a lot of things that haven't been really lining up to me with scriptures. And I just want to share a few things before I go on. Now, again, this is more thoroughly discussed in my lesson on fringes. But the blue lace, as you can see on your left and the blue lace on your right, these are the, the two different types of styles that many people, many believers, Israelites and the like, would say that they're supposed to be. And you can see on the right that there's four. And remember that talk about the four quarters. So a lot of times, you know, this word fringe and tassels can get mixed up. But again, I don't want to get too deep in it. But just know this, as you look into things, it's like, where do you put these fringes? People say, what are the four quarters of your garment? Do we have to, is, does it have to be the ancient garments? And there's many different understandings. You will look at, you know, many understandings if the garment was like the one you see on your right with this four and it does say tassels there or fringes it is what another definition would have and some even go so far as to use certain um, archaeological things uh, to bring about that you know the ancient Israelites wore fringes like you see here on this man's garment however I don't agree with these things at all in the sense but again you'll see many people wearing different styles Now, I think these things look nice and they look good, but for people to force and say, if you don't have your keeping your fringes, you're not keeping the commandments. Well, I don't believe that this is the true way to keep the commandments of uh, if you're going to keep the fringe commandment, they wouldn't be like this. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, cause again too much confusion, but just bring forth this truth. You see. I see in the scripture it says the four quarters of the garment are the four borders of blue or hemming points of the garment, the holes for the head, the arms and the body. And as you can see here, and let me just read the scriptures from Deuteronomy chapter 22 and Numbers 15 which basically speak the simplicity of the fringes. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture wherewith thou coverest thyself. And in Numbers 15. And that they put upon the fringe, the hem, of the borders, a ribbon of blue. So to me, you can see clearly again, we have one, two, three, and four, you know, borders, the extremities of the garment. One for the head, two for the arms, and one for the lower part of the body. And that's where, you know, it's almost like it's like Jah's temple, you know, these borders that we have. There's different styles that maybe people want to come with, but I do believe that this is how the real fringes should be. And, you know, it's the hem and the blue on, on the corner. Again, just think about it. You know, you'd be, every time you do something, and these, even though these are t-shirts here, if it was a longer garment, you know, like this brother's here, and even went down to your hands, every time you would do something, you'd be seeing that border on your hand. And to me, just using the border border, even though this brother has some fringes at the bottom here, that way, um, you know, that's not, that's not four quarters. Even though it goes all around the body, people try to say that's the four quarters or four corners, but that's not so. It's one, two, three, and four. 
So again, I don't want to get this into this too much, but it is something you can bring up, make people think about it. I myself don't wear fringes all the time, but I do have certain garments that I like to maybe wear on the Sabbath, or even if I do a lesson online, you know, that way. But I don't teach that if you don't wear fringes, you're breaking the commandments, and some may think otherwise. But just be sure to know that, you know, I don't feel that the bottom that you see below, you know, is the right way to do fringes, and I feel it's at the top. But I think the most important thing is, is that you're remembering to keep the Most High's commandments. And that's what it's really all about. So I hope that you just take heed to that understanding that, you know, if you don't wear fringes, you're still living, praying for the Holy Spirit to keep the commandments. And if you want to wear fringes, so be it. Exodus 24.10, we read, a paved work of a sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness so let's get into this and get the full context of this verse exodus 24 8 it reads and moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said behold the blood of the covenant which jah hath made with you concerning all these words then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work, like a pavement, of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. What a wonderful thing that they saw. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. And this occurred on the Feast of Pentecost during or the Feast of First Fruits is when the Most High gave his law in the third month. Continuing, And Jah said unto Moses, Come up to me in the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. So my focus is again here, notice that he said that he's going to give tables of stone. Notice that he's standing under his feet, a paved work of the sapphire stone. And remember that his throne is also of sapphire. And this is something that is of his work which he has written. Unlike the introduction to the video, Moses never wrote that. And it was given again so that Moses may teach it to the people. Verse 13. And Moses rose up and his minister, Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of Elohim. So a beautiful, beautiful verse here. And again, as we can see here, it's talking about the sapphire stone, this a paved work of sapphire, right? in the body of heaven in his clearness so when we start to put this all together and we start to look up in the sky and the blueness and just says heaven is his throne and it's based upon mercy and truth and all the beautiful things that the most high has given us we start to get an understanding that you know just maybe that these stones here that they've shown us in the traditional way might not be how it is and that they may be the blue stones let me continue Exodus 32, 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, on the one side and on the other side were they written. And the tables were the work of Jah, and the writing was the writing of Jah graven upon the tables. So these things were written with the Most High's hand. And remember, there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. So these things are holy. Think about the holy cloth, the ribbon of blue, all dealing with the Most High's commandments. These indeed is some wonderful understandings, and I give thanks to the Most High. You know, we've been given the traditional understanding in its erroneous way in many ways. But I think there's a more of a closer, true scriptural understanding. And this understanding, again, helps make things clear for us, helps to make us understand that there is deception in the world and misrepresentation of the Most High's words. But I just want to let you know, despite if you think the commandments 
are not blue and they're stone or whatever they might be in a different color. Faithful obedience in the Messiah to just Ten Commandments is an outward manifestation of being sealed with the Holy Spirit. When you decide in your life and you come to the Most High in prayer, you will understand that this manifestation in you to be good, to do what is right, because remember the commandments identify sin. And this is why the Most High sent His Son to die for our sins so that we would have forgiveness of sins. And this is again why we believe in the resurrection of the Messiah so that we would get a resurrection from death. Be sure to understand this, that this blue is the seal of Jah. It's a reflection of obedience to Jah's law and faith in our understanding and in our actions. So we got to be good. The mark of the beast is a reflection of Satan's disobedience to Jah's law. It's in our understanding and in our actions as well. So really, these things are just right before us. Are we going to choose Jah's ways or, or the devil's ways? 1 John 2 My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Joshua the Messiah, the righteous, Jesus the Christ, Yahawashai, Yahshua, Yahusha, Hamashiach. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. That's a big word there, that if, it's conditional. So we will know that we know the Most High if we keep his commandments, that means we're walking in his ways. He can't be perfect. And this is why we have to repent, you know, and have repentance for ourselves. However, though, we have to make sure that this is the standard that we walk by and live by. Verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So this is the other side of the coin, same way. So I know a lot of people say, oh, you don't have to keep the commandments, you know, the Sabbath day the festivals, eating clean meats, respecting even blood or semen issues with unclean you know, laws that way, or these are all done away with. But there is a difference between clean and unclean. And the commandments of the Most High regarding you know, His dietary law, not eating unclean meats, and as well as keeping the festivals and not keeping the pagan festivals of the world, this is how we're supposed to be living. Verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of Jah perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, it's keeping the Most High's commandments and also walking in the understanding and the magnitude of the Messiah, how he brought forth his commandments. Because it goes on to verse 8 to say, Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. So we have to let this light shine. And when you're kind of getting in with this topic, believe you me, the blue commandments, the mark of Jah, the sign of Jah, the mark of the beast starts to come out a little bit more clearly. So everyone's going to have to choose. Will you follow the Most High? Will you keep His commandments and have the faith and testimony of His Son? Or will you do what you want to do and find a religion that just allows you to just pray over food and not worry about keeping pagan festivals or even ignoring the Most High's holy times? I have to finish it off with a few more verses. John 15, 9, it reads, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue, yea, in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Abba's commandments and abide in his love. So we know that the Most High sent his Son, and his Son lived in the commandments. And if we're talking about the great morality of the commandments, yes, he did everything to the T, but it was his moral love. Commandments are based upon love. 
Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, were to keep the commandments of Jah, and have the testimony of Joshua the Messiah. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Jah and the faith of Joshua the Messiah. Yahshua, Jesus, Yahusha, Yahshua, Joshua, Jehoshua. And in the last chapter of the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, in Revelation 22:14, it reads, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So as we can see here, commandment keeping is very, very important. But we can't rely on commandment keeping as it's going to save us. No, the Messiah is going to save us and he has saved us. But this is the standard of our righteousness. The things that are good and the things that are evil. Life and death. This is the choice. And remember, the whole conclusion of the matter is to fear Jah and keep his commandments. Because every secret thing every secret word that we do will come into the judgment so this is why we have an advocate one who died for us and we can go and live a life of repentance and continue to try to sin no more well thank you for listening to this lesson i hope you get a great understanding about the blue stones my name is brother sean and this is the throne of jah and the sapphire stones don't forget to subscribe like and share this video one love